so that I adjust this the right way. So P will be equal to NRT over V. Is everyone comfortable with that? And once again, these were the moles of oxygen and the moles of CH4. Sorry, I hadn't recorded if you're watching, but whatever. Here we go. N was 0.875. R is 0 0.0821. T was, was it still 298? Yeah, I didn't change that. And then volume, I don't remember, was it 4? Okay. Plug that in, and you end up with some number. How many had that right? Please be more than whatever the number was yesterday. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 14, 15, 16, 17. Action has happened. Um, you're going to need, yep, that's fine. You're going to need these numbers in the future, correct? So just kind of remember those are where they are. Um, Colomore was using some also the other day. Um, so, okay. All right. The mass of the water vapor in the flask at equilibrium. The water vapor, since it's at room temperature, the water vapor isn't determined by the chemical reaction. It's determined by the vapor pressure at that specific temperature. All right. It's the same as it was before. Now, to calculate that, you would do the following. But we need... Um, mass. Mass is measured in grams. There is no grams in piv nert moles. So this we moles of H2O using piv nert because I only gave you the pressure of the water vapor. Okay? So the first thing I need to do is convert this to torr. Is everyone okay with that? So I'm going to take or sorry, ATMs, thank you. 23.76 divided by 760. All right, type that in. It was 0 0.003, wasn't it, or something like that? Okay. Or 0 0.03. All right, we'll just go with that value right now. I'm not going to worry about more decimal places. So we have 0 0.03. Um, that's ATM of water vapor. Okay, now we need to get that to moles. So I need to solve for N correctly, or correct? So I'm going to put PV equals NRT because I don't want to screw my algebra up, which means N will be equal to PV divided by RT if I take them to the other side. Okay, so many kids do that algebra wrong. Just write the whole thing out every time. All right, so N, I'll write it over here now is the pressure, which we found to be 0 0.03 atm. The volume was still 4. Um, R is 0 0.0821. And T was 298 after it reached equilibrium again. And we ended up with what value yesterday? 0 0.005 grams of H2O gas. Every other piece of water would be what? Oh, that's our moles. Sorry. I forgot. Yes, then you multiply by 18. Thank you. And that was 0.09. Okay, sorry. Thanks for calling me out faster, though. Sometimes you let me go for like two minutes, and you knew it was wrong the whole time. Um, all right, 0.09 grams of H2O. We had that answer yesterday, so I'm not going to make you raise your hand, but under, raise your hand if you understand how we got it. Okay, good. I feel better already. And I didn't start today off angry. That helps. It wasn't your fault, but I could still take it out on you yesterday. All right. I'm a parent. We have a degree in that. Punishing kids for something else. Um, all right. Which reactant is in excess and how many grams of it remain at equilibrium? So just help me out once again. Uh, what were the moles of O2 we had? 0.25. What was the moles of CH4? 0.625. From the balance, we had CH4 plus O2 went to H2O 
and CO2. Whoa, I wrote that in the wrong order for me. I almost always write it the other way, but it doesn't matter. So it was one, two, two, one. We okay with that? It, I wrote it backwards of how I normally do, but who cares? All right, now, looking at the coefficients, oxygen needs to be two times bigger than this number. Is it? No, not even remotely, right? So what's your limiting reactant? Oxygen is your limiting reactant. So excess, I did that weird yesterday too. Excess is? CH4 is excess. Now, this is tomorrow. It's a different equation. So don't just memorize right now that CH4 is excess because tomorrow it won't be there. I don't know, we did it. Isn't it CH4 always? Okay, it's a different equation tomorrow. All right, now how many grams of it remain at equilibrium? All right, well, we have to find how much of it was used, correct? We know, and we'll do moles, and at the end we'll convert it to grams. So we know we have this many to start with, correct? Now, yesterday I did do this in a picket fence. I will today because I think some kids got lost right here. So I take my limiting reactant, which was 2.5 or 0.25 moles of O2, and I solve for moles of CH4. You okay with that? And that is the used. Yesterday we just did this in our head, and I don't know that that was a good idea. So what's in front of moles O2? up here a two. Oh, geez Thomas two moles of O2 that's on the bottom because this unit always goes there what unit do I go on top then moles of CH4 and that was a one and yesterday I did the same thing I said hey since that's a two we're gonna take half but I don't know that that was very well understood it's the same idea so half of 0.25 is 0.125 used. You okay with that? So my initial was 0.65. My used is 0.125. So my difference is 0.5. That was convenient. I like that math. All right, now, these are moles, correct? So I now need to take my 0.5 moles of CH4, and I need to multiply that by... 16 grams per one mole, and that ends up to be 8 grams CH4 excess. Thank you. That was all luck. Okay. Who had 8? Raise your hands. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, that's, that's progress. Now, if you're one of the 15 that didn't, it doesn't feel like progress. But I think last, yesterday, it was a, one person had this right. Two? Okay, never mind. Well, two to 15, that's a great percentage of increase. I'm not good at math. It's like almost an 800 increase. All right. Who understands the idea of it? Okay. I hope, because this isn't Pivner. That part's not Pivner at all. That's chapter three, chapter four, and every other chapter that we've done an excess reactant problem. You find your initial, then you use your limiting reactant to solve for the amount used. Um, and, and there we go. Okay, while I have all this crap written, um, is there any liquid water remaining? Let's do F. Did I skip to F? because it, it uses the math we have on the screen already. How many grams of water vapor was there? Does anyone remember? There was 0 0.09 grams of H2O vapor. Well, how much is there? Oh, this is not water. I'm sorry. We don't need this. Um, sorry, it's coming up later. What's that, Newman? Yeah, we'll need it eventually, but I was I was in my head. I was on a, a, another piece. Okay, so are we all right? All right, so E, that's the hardest part. What is the total pressure in the flask at equilibrium? 
in order to find total pressure, we need to know the moles of every gas. So in the thing, I'm just going to make a table real fast. All right, we had CH4, we had O2, we had CO2, and we had H2O. We've already found the moles of H2O, correct? And that was? Oh, that was the... Okay, we're all right with that one? We already found that. We also know oxygen is what? Zero. Um, and then we actually did just find this. I just erased it. I... 0.5. That's what, that's what when I said let's do F. I was just thinking, hey, we already have this number. It was this piece I was thinking. So we have this because this was the excess moles before we multiplied it by 16. We okay with that? So we're most of the way there. CO2 is the only one we have left. It's not bad. We do the same process where we take my limiting reactant moles and we find my CO2 moles. It's a fairly simple picket fence. So my limiting reactant, I've already forgotten the moles, the number. What was it for O2? Oh, oh, right, okay, that, that sounds better. So then remember we had two moles of O2. Um, what was in front of CO2? One mole. CO2, we get 0.125. That's the amount produced. I don't need to subtract that or anything. That just goes right here. 0.125. All right. Um, and then, once we have all of the moles, we add to get N and then Pivnert. The total is? Okay. Remind me that here in a second. So PV equals NRT. So P is NRT over V. So just plug that in. I have, what did you say? Point what? Six. R, 0 0.0821, T was 298, V is still 4. This is a point, in case you're looking. And you end up with what value? 3.85. Okay. Are we okay with that? Who, who had done this problem and got it right? 1, 2, 3, 4. Runs well. Okay, that's progress because that was one before. That is a twelve thousand percent, twelve hundred percent increase. Yes. Because you always have to use the limiting reactant. Once you define what the limiting reactant is, the limiting reactant always determines how much of this you can get. It's like money to you. The limiting reactant is. You can't sp get more than you have to spend in the first place. Um, okay. Who's good so far? Okay. The, the bonus question um, isn't too bad. We need to find the moles. And F has nothing to do with Pivner, really. Like it kind of does, but we already did that piece. So we got to find the moles of H2O produced. And that's just another limiting reactant picket fence. 0.25 of O2, 2 moles of O2. What's in front of H2O? 2 moles of H2O. And you don't have to do a picket fence. If you realize it's the same coefficient, you'll realize it's the same value. All right, it's 0.25 moles of H2O produced, correct? All right, minus the value we found before, 0 0.005, so that's 0 0.2495, 45, 
yeah, that's, I'm dumb. I know why I did that wrong, but it is that. All right. And so we take this. Oh, geez. This drives me bonky. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Don't swear, Tom. All right, 0.245, and we just need to multiply that by 18. And that number is 4. Point what? 4, 1. My cursor's disappeared. Grams. Okay, we're going to guess it's there. Nope. <laughs> the, the look, the thing's not there, so I just kind of have to guess. So I'm going to circle the 4.41 again. <laughs> yeah, I wish you guys knew what greatness you're around every freaking day. Um, okay, I gotta push this button real fast. So a real gas and an ideal gas behave most similarly at what pressure? All right. Low pressure, because that allows them to be as far away from each other as possible. Okay? All right, and then what temperature? High. Because that allows them to move fast. If you're far apart and moving quick, you're less likely to interact with each other and stick together. That's the whole thing we want to avoid. And I mean, not really, but that's the whole thing the ideal gas law is assuming is that these never stick together. And the likelihood when there's low pressure and they can bounce wherever they feel like, because pressure really is squeezing the thing smaller. Okay with that? All right, there's plenty of room. They collide less. All right, and if they're going hot, they'll hit faster and bounce off and have less likelihood to stick together. Yes. Um, I can make one up, um, but before I do that, go ahead. So what we're doing here, we're solving a partial pressure problem. You have 10 grams of O2, 10 of NH3, and 5 of H2O. The total is 6 atm. Okay, that is enough data. This isn't necessarily a PIV-NERT problem. It, it involves it, but not the actual equation. All right, so I'm going to take 10 and divide by 32. I'm going to take NH3 and divide by 17, and this divided by 18. Um, I'm going to get for O2, what number? 0.625, oh, crap. All right, 10 17ths would be? 5 18ths would be? 0.55? No. <laughs> Two eight sounds great. All right. Now, it's fine if they're not one. We're in a hurry, even though we do have plenty of time. When we add these together, so these are the moles, right? If we add them, we'll get the total, which is important, correct? All right, what's the total? 1.17? Is that what you just said? 1.178. Okay, what's wrong, Emily? Oh. Oh, knowing her, she's livid. All right, each one of these, I'm going to divide by that number, 1.178. Over 1.178. Over 1.178. Correct? All right. I'm going to write those answers over here. I know that's probably annoying, but whatever. We're going to move to this side. So this number divided by that gave you what value? 0.27. This one gave you what? Point what? Really? Yeah, I guess it really does. All right. And this one becomes 0.23. All right. That's, that's good. Why is that good? That should add to 1. All right, now we're going to multiply each one of these by what? 6. All right, 
and I'm still out of space, so I'll write the answers above. 0.27 times 6 is probably like 1.9. Oh, that's terrible. What was called 1.6? How about that? 0.5 times 6, I can do that one in my head. That's 3, right? And then this one was? All right, whatever. <laughs> there we go. Either way is fine. Okay, how many successfully did a partial pressure problem? Keep your hands up if you really want me to put one of those on the test. Because there isn't one, but I feel like maybe I should. Take out the hard one. Yeah, put it easy. No, the before and after is gold. And it's it's the most similar to any looking for the molar mass with these characteristics. I'm looking for the chemical uh, formula of the closest simple hydrocarbon. It may work out well, it may not. Who knows? But, but work. Oh yeah, thank you. I forgot that too. Okay. This one should be fast. This is a fast one. 